So um, I, I guess we're about to start. I'm, I'm kind of flattered that so many people are actually shown up. Uh, I was a little bit afraid when they said they're going to put me in a 200-person room talking about something as arbitrary as the, the new front end for Drupal 8 that we don't even have out yet in a better version. So having more than 15 people showing up who is not completely mark up anal as me is, um, is really, really nice. So thank you for that. I was actually like start by taking a picture of you guys. So can you, can you pretty much say uh, PHP template, fuck you? <laughs> Good. Then we are on. Okay. So um, let me start about this. So normally uh, if I do a presentation like this, I would do this. Uh, I've done it a ton of times in the States, and they always get offended. Uh, I just went to New Zealand and I figured out they don't get offended at all by anything because they're Kiwis. Um, so I guess that you being English don't get offended easily, right? Not even by me being a Dane and still want to reinforce Dana guilt on, back on you guys because that was justice. Um, anyway, so this is me. Um, so if you've got, this is also my Twitter account. So if you want to yell at me, rant at me, and tell me that I'm very, very wrong or that I'm right, this is the account to follow. This is also where everything that's true and good about the world is being treated out. So that's about Drupal frontend, heavy metal, getting drunk on a bad, bad day, and my daughter, Friar. So just to make that clear. This is me 20 years ago. I was, um, I was a hopeful young man who wanted to rock out and play rock and roll. Now I'm beginning to be an old, angry themer instead. Um, if, if anybody look up my normal name, uh, they will get this. You see, Morten Birch Heide Jorgensen. That's pretty much as long as it can get. Um, Birch is actually, um, yeah, you would understand that. The rest of it, pretty much not. So um, this is the middle name, Birch. Um, for those of you who have ever looked at a normal keyboard, you can see it's really, really easy to uh, misspell this name, um, which actually, by having this little spelling error, and this has happened to me a couple of times, I'm perfectly fine with that. So when I have developers being like, Morden, why are you being such a little bitch about this front end? I will go, well, you know, look at my name, bitches. Um, so that's just how it is. And if people want to be... I, mean, I don't have a direct fight with the developers. I just want to have them to give me exactly what I want and nothing else than that. That's a reasonable demand. Um, I've been in Drupal since 4.7. That means almost eight years. Um, I'm running an, a kind of an underground organization called Frontend United. By the way, can we have a quick uh, clap for these two ladies over here? We did Frontend United last year in London. Um, I just got re-elected as king of Drupal in Denmark, which, of course, if we don't use chairman, we use king because you know, we are a kingdom. Um, I do a theme that called Mothership, which is so epic that you cannot even understand it. If you don't use that, or well, you don't understand markup, and that's just too bad for you. I'll educate you on that a little bit later. But um, besides of that, I run a shop called Geek Royale, Copenhagen's finest theme store. If you need this logo on your laptop, um, I actually have them down here. My party trick. I have the stickers with me, so you need them on your laptop. This is how I kind of get, get my stuff around. Um, besides of that, um, a, f a fair, fair warning. My, uh, my ex um, made it clear to me that I was the epitome of everything dark and evil in the world. So I completely understand the developers who do not understand the anchor that some of us front-enders come with, um, because that is what's inside of me, just to, to quote my ex. Um, if anybody want to be in contact with me, this is all the contact information. Um, if you're a recruiter, there's, there's two rules we need to understand. Uh, the first one is don't ask me about any kind of database or like real development. I don't do that kind of thing. And, and second of all, um, I will drink your booze and I will talk with you in the bar and I will smile at you, but that's going to be it. If you want to do anything, send me on LinkedIn. So let's get on with it. So what is wrong with Drupal? Well, Actually, what is actually wrong with Drupal? Theming, because what else is wrong with Drupal is not really my, my thing, and it's actually from a front-end perspective. Um, if you're a developer, you can bitch and moan later at other other session. That's not, not my, my thing, but there's, I've been looking a lot into Drupal the last eight years, and I've done a lot of careful analyzing of what is actually wrong, and I came up with these two things, only two things. Our rich markup, as I've learned to call it, so but getting a little bit older, I'm turning, I've just turned 40, I'm being more like mellow in my life. So I will call this rich markup, because you can see how rich it is, how we're kind of like able to do everything with it, right? 
That's one of the problems. The reason this is a problem is basically that it's hard to manipulate it into what you want. Um, the other thing is the, um, the rich and fulfilling CSS we have. By adding layers and layers and layers of CSS, we're going to end up having um, a site that's heavy, a site that's hard to maintain, and at least at, at the end of it, a kind of the, where is this, this thing actually came from in my theme? That's kind of the other element in it. Um, so, as I've seen it, these are the two only problems I have with Drupal and as a front-ender. It's the markup and the CSS. Um, so, that's kind of make it simple. Because, um, so here's the thing. The markup and the CSS have been, for the last eight years, been developed by one group. How many in here think it's done by front-enders? For the record, nobody put their hand, hand up. How many here think it was done by developers in a hurry who just want to have somebody to shut up? A little bit more. How many here think that's a good idea? Again, no hands came up. And that's actually one of the problems we have, that the whole front end, the whole front end architecture that's built in Drupal has been built by people who don't have to focus on that. That's like me getting me to build the, um, the database structure. Because how I do my stuff, I do uh, select from start table. That's how I do a selection. It's not pretty. So who should we blame about this? Because of course we should blame. Well, I would normally just blame the developers because basically they don't understand my needs. That gets me back to the themer, who is actually being a little bit of a spoiled brat. Because how can we just moan about this? That's not fair. Especially not by five, six, seven years. So. Um, one of the things that, that we, we came up with, like the idea that develop, a developer community thought we wanted was the idea of one markup to rule them all. The idea of, hey, you can just use the CSS to change whatever you want. Because CSS is just about colors, right? It has nothing to do with how the layout works or responsive websites and all that stuff. This was kind of the thing that we thought eight years ago that we're still living by. That's kind of an issue. Because um, when we do CSS, this is actually, am I the only one who kind of feel this is how we do CSS? Like, God, yeah, let's try this and that. It's like, we're not doing it the way we should, and we're doing it this way because Drupal is built in a certain way, so we're forced to work in only one way. So the idea is, how about we try to figure this out? Um, I met WebCheck uh, a year and a half ago uh, at a shooting range in Denver, out where the rednecks are, and we were out shooting big guns, which was fun. And... Um, I did the dumb question of asking, uh, kind of, um, I bitched and moaned at, at WebCheck of what was wrong with Google uh, and the theme layer. And at some point, WebCheck told me, well, you know what, Martin? Uh, nobody told us what to do. And me being a Dane and a man and a front-end developer is not the most clever dude in the world. It took me about a month until I figured out what she actually meant. She meant nobody told us what to do. Because developers, what is that they do? They solve a problem. If you don't tell them what the problem is, it's kind of like how I've had it with um, several ladies in my life. You know, they're trying to make a, a hunch at me. Like, Morton, how about you do this? And I really don't get it. If she instead take a bat, smack it to my head and tell me exactly, do this, I will do that. It's the same way around developers. You just have to, like, make it very, very clear. Um, but if nobody told the developer community what to do, then we're going to have a problem because then we have front-enders who want one thing, cannot figure out how to tell it, and that's not working out. You know? And we, um, we did try different things. We did try the pretty please. Can I just get like the markup and get what I want? Um, the problem is when you're working in a system that big as Drupal, it that's get a little bit hard because um, you cannot just go and do a pretty please because you, know, you need to have some traction behind it and, and, and just trying to like bash in new code through through the uh, usual way to do it, kind of went, went to be a little bit hard. So um, we started um, an initiative, initiative a couple of years ago that was basically figuring out what was wrong with the front end for real and stop so much of the bitching and moaning and trying instead of going a little bit more offensive and um, figuring out how can we change this stuff. Um, I would actually use it as another way. We call it anchor driven development. And if you look at how how open source, one of the basic elements in open source is scratch your own itch. Um, and we had a big itch here we wanted to scratch. And what we do is we, we complain and we bitch and moan about stuff, and then we figure out how to do that. So instead of being, 
become more and more negative. Uh, what we were trying to do is take all the energy you get by being like, why is this so fucking dumb? Jubal, why do you give me three diffs every time I need one? Why do I get three classes when I only need one? And why cannot use a class name that makes sense instead of that auto-generated crap that you're giving me? You know, those kind of things, when you take that and turn it into another thing, you slowly get to be um, not so much positive, but you can use the energy to do something. So two years ago in... Yeah, two years in Amsterdam, what we did was we sat down a bunch of us, like 20 front-enders, and we made a list of crap that was done, that was wrong in the world. And at the same time, what happened was over in, uh, in San Francisco, we had about 15 developers sitting there over this weekend. And what we basically did Friday night was we made a big list of these are the things that we actually need to change. And then we went out drinking because San Francisco is... 10 hours behind us at that point. So the next morning we came in and they actually came with the recommendation of why don't we just use Twig. Um, and at that point, none of us had really any idea of what Twig was. Uh, I know there was something Symphony or another template engine, but it turned out actually to be a, a pretty good, uh, good thing. Because first of all, we could be like, hey, by having a new theme layer in, we could say PHP template, fuck off, once and for all. Um, and the good thing about that is that we did not have to work around how PHP template do it. And when you change the whole theme system, you have to work through every file there is. You have to change everything. That is a very, very good excuse for us to also change the markup, the class naming, and everything else. And it's just a tiny little work task. Um, so instead of, instead of doing trick, uh, instead of doing PHP template, having this big juggernaut that we have been doing for seven years, um, we're adding this a little bit of like French elegance to it. Um, but besides of changing the, the theme layer, that's not enough. Because if we're just changing the way we're doing it purely on code basis, and we're not listening to what we actually thought was wrong, what we're going to end up, we're going to end up with the exact same mess in about five years. Because as you all saw before when I asked how many of you thought there was any front-enders doing any work on the theme system, before there was nobody. So if we didn't get the front-enders in to do this work, well, we will end up with the same thing. Um, so we basically begin to have meetings everywhere we could. So everywhere there was a sprint, we would do that. Um, uh, some of us, like we get, we've been at yeah, in Amsterdam, at Bad Camp, at DrupalCon in Munich, a bunch of DrupalCons. Pretty much every event I've been at, I've been like sitting down talking with front-enders, figuring out what is it that we actually want, and then trying to take that back instead of we're doing that retrospective. Um, 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 here's the, one of the first things we figured out that we don't want to have anymore. Don't try from the markup perspective to do everything once. So the reason we have this very rich markup today is we're always thinking these idea of, oh, if I don't have to change anything of the markup, I, I, no, we're trying to solve everything in one instead of going with an idea of like, hey, how about we build a use case? How about we say, what is it actually you, you need to do when you have a login form? What is it that you need to do when you have a username? What are these things? Instead of we trying to put off as many layers so we can like kind of get it done once. Um, and here's another thing. Let's try not to dumb it down. I've learned that one of the reasons that we didn't, we have the link wrapped into another link, to another link, to another link to create the menus, was that well, we didn't want to make it too complicated for the themers. You know, just here's your menu. The problem is the thing that is the menu is this big, cumbersome piece of crap that I cannot manipulate into what I want because none from the developer perspective even know what some designer comes with to me. So, and trying to not to make it, or we cannot make it advanced. Well, um, how many developers, by the way, have I in this room? Quick show of hands. Okay. How many of you do um, understand how CSS actually works? On a, also on a, on a browser level, so which browser understands which kind of thing? How many? Good. So you know it's, it's completely undocumented and we're just doing it by heart, right? Um, when you do real development, you have an API. You have real stuff you can work with. We don't have that in the front end. We pretty much have a, oh, there came out a new mobile phone. Thank you for that. I will now change all of my sites. That's how we work. We need to be way more flexible. We have no idea what comes tomorrow. Um, but basically, we ended up having these five points, like start from nothing, which is basically, Drupal provide as little as I need, and then let me add what I need on it. 
um, provide tools. The reason I want to provide tools is like, how about I can actually find my files, visibility to find it, consistency. So we always call a title a title, and content will always content. So use the same names, make it simple, and don't dumb it down. Because even that, I know I'm a front end and I'm a little bit dumb. We're not that dumb. I would rather, instead of now trying to find stuff by like pulling stuff out of thin air, going the other way around and actually you know, see the data. So, what is all the new awesome shite that we got in Drupal 8 versus Drupal 7, or as I call it, the 666 reasons that Drupal 8 is better than Drupal 7? Well, here's the first one, HTML5. Um, HTML5 is, in many ways, oh yeah, there's an article tag and a section tag, but there's also another, it's kind of another way of thinking. Um, this is actually the stuff we can now work with. Um, and now we, we've stopped another thing. We have stopped supporting IE6. We have stopped supporting IE7 and IE8. They are no longer more of a, yes. Um, they're no longer part of what we do, which is really, really great. And here's the sweet thing. If you look at browser stats, you see how little people are actually using IE9 and it's jumping directly to IE10 is even better. So as a front ender, that makes me happy every day. Um, if you really need this for IE8, by the time we're going to get Drupal 8 out, IE8 is probably completely dead anyways, but that's a whole other thing. Um, there, there's a module that's going to be provided with it, um, and we're going to have pretty markup. So um, this was a thing I did uh, like an hour ago. I, I installed a new version of Drupal 8. Um, let me see. Let's just get up in full screen instead, so it's a little bit. So, so this is the install page now. As, as, as you can see, it has a class name called l-container, had, have a header roller, and the main tag we're using as well. So it's like, this is really cleared down to be the, the, as little markup as possible. And this is just for the install page. So if you've ever looked at the, how the old install page looked, one of the things we really want to do now is making sure that we make it, we make it pretty and as, as we want it. Um, Oh, and another detail here. Look, only one class name on the body tag. And I know if you don't live in the front end, this may not mean anything to you. To me, this is a world changer. Um, yeah, pretty mark of, did it? Oh, damn it. Sorry. There we go. Um, another thing we did was removing the bad practice that we have about adding IDs to everything. Um, I did a quick count. I think it's about 37 percent of all the IDs we have removed right now. Uh, you know, the idea of having a sidebar, having that an ID and so forth is kind of retarded, not how we do that. Um, we'll still, of course, have IDs inside of the markup as we need them, but the whole idea is to actually clean that stuff out. Um, you know, removing all the class names that we don't, don't use, because who have ever used the HTML class in the body tag? <laughs> Seriously, that shit had been there for like, what, four years now? and nobody could even answer that. This is the kind of the stuff that just got thrown in because, you know, the garbage can is the markup. Um, another thing that we talked about was, hey, how about we begin to build our CSS on modern structures? Um, you, you all know what SMAX is, right? Good, I see a lot of, if you don't, you just like yell, Morton, I have no idea, please explain stuff to me. Um, so um, the, the decision was made to like build on the architecture of that. Uh, CSS file names have been changed a little bit. This is, the, in, in Drupal 8, it used to be, uh, Drupal 7 used to be the bad naming scheme, which was the uh, base and admin and theme, which is the different levels for, for where your CSS files got loaded in. This was uh, decided in Sydney last year after a very, very long discussion. As you can see, this is the official, um, more than the angry theme I have approved. Uh, it was me and John Alban pretty much trying to fight this out over in the sun, by the way. So, by the way, come to Code Sprints, we're standing in the sun. Um, the idea here is to actually end up having a, a file naming that will make everybody make it easy for us to find this stuff in the CSS. Um, if you want to see more of this, this is the node ID. Uh, you will not remember that. I've, these slides will put up on GitHub later on and put out so you can find that. But this is the we have a very uh, thorough documentation now on how the new CSS standards is. Um, another thing when we talk about consistency, um, the first time I start doing Drupal sites, what happened? I needed to do a new theme, so of course I dropped my theme down into the themes folder. You know, that thing that is out in the root. 
now that is perfectly okay. You don't have to drop your stuff down inside slash all slash whatever. So, so this is my this is still just a screenshot of my whole of my Drupal 8 site. And down there we can drop in our themes. And here we go. Um, modules has its own folder as well, and you have call here. So it's actually easier to find. Um, and of course it's kind of crazy talk, but this is like one of the things we talked about. This is the small things that we need to change. Um, same thing is, if you want to find the, the template files in a, in a module now, you will go down, you go to modules, you'll find the module, and then it will have a folder called templates. So if you're a developer, pretty please put all your templates there so we as front-enders can find the stuff. Um, but here's, here's one of the things that we figured out. is like, It's all good, the templates are laying here, but I as a front-end dev cannot find this stuff. Well, because where is it placed at? I'm looking in my markup, and it's just like, it's, it's just buying crap, right? You, I mean, am I the only one that had issues finding a template? Uh, okay, we want to see something really, really fucking cool. So, this line, settings, trick, debug, true. If you do that in your settings file, this is what you're going to get. So, this does not look at much, but this is your source code now. And if we look over here, it says theme debug, call theme node. Oh my god, this is the node. Pretty sweet shit. Note dash dash article HTML trick. I wonder what that does. Um, I have a note dash three. Ah, that's the specific one. This is also from a view, so I can use that. I get directly out of my markup when I look into the source the name of where this stuff comes from. No more using days and days and days of finding this. This is to me some of the sexiest shit ever. I will, will though. Um, kind of add a little detail that this has been in the mothership theme for the last three years, but that's a whole nother thing. But, you know, I'm happy it compiled, came in. Um, another thing that I did not think about that, that Drupal is doing now, it is compiling the, the, the template files. And if you don't know what compiling actually means, and I kind of even don't, until I figure out, wait a minute, compiling, that's just the same thing we do when we're doing SAS filing. So, to me, that's pretty simple. Um, anybody have an just like raise the hand up. I, I did a, a similar talk, and there was people who had no idea what compiling meant. But with, by doing it like, like SAS files, it makes sense. The good thing about this is we can now begin to read directly from. We uh, how's it called? Uh, we can read from. Uh, mm -mm. We can now have Drupal actually understanding if we have changed files, which is a pretty sweet thing. Um, this, and this, by the way, means that we no more ever have to do any kind of print PHP stuff. It also means that we cannot ever more do database calls inside of a template, which apparently has been a big issue from the developer community, who apparently thought that, you know, themers put in a MySQL database call inside of a theme. I don't know any themers who put any kind of database crap into their theme. Why? Because they don't want to touch that shit. You know who puts, puts database crap into a, a theme? Bad developers. That's who puts it in. So let's just get that out there. Because this is how I do my selections. Oh, there's like three developers in the room who think this is funny. <laughs> God damn it. Um, so, but these two lines will save you so much time. Settings, trick, underscore, debug. Settings, trick, auto, reload. It's simply two little things that you want to have in your local theme when you install that. So, um, what is this trick thing? Well, basically, this is how we're going to, I mean, this is, this used to be a comment, and this is how we print a variable. In trick, this is a comment, and this is how we print a variable. Done. You don't do any print statement, you just go like, hey, put this out. That's pretty simple to me. Um, if Back in Drupal, you know, we had stuff like this, print, foo, bar, the ever-loving, undefined, something else, something else, something, god damn it, where's my template data, right? Um, so, when we, get, when we go to trick instead, we do this, foo, bar, bass, done with this shit. What does it mean? Well, this is how we drill, this is how we do in Drupal 7, right? We're trying to figure out, trying to drill into that variable data, and we can use a, a week on it, and we try to explain to the client, yeah, there's a reason that it took me three days to change this one little thing, because I could not find the data. Thank you, Drupal. Well, we can now begin to look like professionals again, because we can just do this. Um, this is another thing you will see in my upcoming examples here. This is kind of a, a functions thing, that it just does. Um, so, 
And if else, it used to look like this, if full print var int if. We just do this now. If, boom, int if. It's, it's pretty similar, I think. Um, the same thing is, if we want to do like loops, take the, the, the most awesome theme in the world, we can do a for users in users, so print user, username, int the for, and it will give us this kind of data. Um, to me, again, back to this is, this looks simple. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got a new clicker here. I'm trying to figure out how it works. There we go. Um, if you want to loop stuff, one of the, one of the things we're going to do much in, in the trick templates you're going to do is you're going to do for loops. And a for loop is basically like take all the data and roll it around. There's going to be an example of that pretty soon. But this is the, this is the loop length, first, last, index, boom, boom, boom. To me, again, simple stuff. Another thing we can do inside of the trick template is setting a variable. So by setting a variable would be, oops, would be something like, Okay, give me a foo that is like a loop index, and that, and print it out, and that will give me a count dash, the number of it. This is the this is an an variable I set inside of a template. Um, if I want to do filters, and I want to like, hey, give me this output as an uppercase, this is one way of doing it. Just do filter upper, or you can do it as a pipe instead, um, which is basically kind of this idea. And I can have multiple pipes on the data as well. So if I want to manipulate it on the fly, I can do that. So I go like, hey, take the name, remove all the tags from this string, and you know, do it a title. And we're going to get this instead. Um, fairly small little things that, that, that should be pretty easy to work around with. Um, so this is all there is to trick. There's no more to it. And I know that sounds, it looks really, really boring, or like, what, what with all these like, sexy things I could do with PHP? Well, here's the thing, if you get the data right, theming is just about taking the data that comes out and manipulate that fucker into whatever it is that the designer have given us, right? That's all there is to it. Um, I've been building a theme that's called Utrasil. Utrasil is, um, in the Norse mythology, is the, um, the biggest, strongest, badasses tree you can find. It's the, the whole world tree. Because I found that, that calling a, a thing twig sound kind of weak, and me being like Viking heritage, ultra chill is kind of like the way to do it. And the good thing is you can also figure out who's your friends and who's not. Um, well, almost, because the Swedes also know how to pronounce ultra chill, which I'm not so happy about, but it's pretty much a good way to cleaning out. Um, but first of all, we have the exact same theme structure as we used to have in Drupal 7. So you have an HTML wrapper, you have a page, you have a region, you have a block, you have a node, you have a field. So we have the same way we are building the pages up, so that's not changed. Um, but if you look into the, um, this is how, how our, our info file used to look in, um, in Drupal 7, right? You have all these things, you define your regions, and, and we have like the little, uh, we have a, uh, God damn it, wonder list. Can you fuck off? Yeah. Um, this, is, this is our info for Drupal 7. So in Drupal 8, it's changed a little bit, but not so much. Um, as you can see, we defined the name, we defined it. It's a theme, it's a description, package call, and, and here's some, some sexy shit. So these are my style sheets. Um, this is for, my, for, the, for everything, right? You have the style sheet for print, and then we have this one. Style sheet remove. Anybody who's clever enough to understand what this does? Exactly. It removes CSS files you don't need. So we don't use, use to do the fuck off and die technique anymore. And the clever ones like modern what is fuck off and die? Well, fuck off and die is this thing. If you look down here, in Drupal 7, if you want to make sure that, that Drupal does not load a CSS file, well, what you do is you, um, you, you simply just call it so Drupal thinks you have added it into your theme and then Drupal forgets all about it because Drupal is dumb as a door. That's a good thing. The bad thing about that is just that basically it's bad practice. So that is now defined that we can remove stuff directly from our theme. To me that is sweet. Um, the same thing here, regions is defined just as we used to. So the, all the basic elements of how Drupal do stuff is the same. Um, if you really love PHP template, first of all, I think we're going to have a talk later tonight and a bar with a bat. Um, but you can uncomment the engine and you can still use PHP template if you really like that. Um, honestly, I have no idea why we're still having this in Drupal 8 core. I think we should remove it and burn it. But maybe that's just because I'm a little bit angry and a little bit of a front-ender. So that's just how it is. Um, 
Yeah, this was the, the fuck off entire thing. Um, so regions, how regions used to be was this stuff up here. If page, footer, and all of these kind of things. Now you just, as, as again, things have been simplified a lot. If page, footer, do this, and oh yeah. We're actually using a footer tag with a role in content info. Another thing that makes me happy. Um, if we look into a block, so um, I was looking into Drupal 8, and of course I saw the first thing was the navigation block for a menu, and that was wrapped with a div. And everybody who knows anything about markup will of course be like, what is this shit? Because it needs a nav tag. We're still doing the same way we override all our templates. So um, up here, this is the block trick file as it looks right now. So if I want to override that from my system menu and add it a nav tag, Instead, I can do block dash dash system menu blah, blah, blah. How do I get this data? Did you remember the, the, um, the debug info? You get that stuff right out of there. It's sweet and it's simple, um, as we can see here. Uh, again, if you want to replace stuff, um, so these, the, the whole pipe thing, there's also a pipe that we can do use to replace. So if I want to replace block out of, out of an element for a class, and I also do that directly in my theme. I don't have to do this in a PH, uh, template PHP file anymore. So we can maybe get away from having those 3,000 lines in our, in our template file, which I think would be pretty nice. And I would actually be able to look into my theme three months later to figure out what I, what I actually was, been, what I did do at that point. Well, honestly, I don't think it's three months. Actually, it's usually 20 minutes, and I've forgotten all about what I did. So that's another thing we can do now. Um, so in Drupal 7, uh, we have had all the attributes, that attribute thing that got printed out. Um, and we still have that in Drupal 8. At first, I got a little bit cranky by seeing that until I figured out, wait a minute, I can manipulate this at my will because I'm a magician. Um, and how to do that? Well, um, so let's say we have a, had the attributes and the attributes around a markup element would normally be having a class and a goal and all that stuff and I want to split it out. Well, why, why do I want to split it out? Well, I want to have it easy to manipulate, right? Um, so I can go in and say, well, fair enough, you have attributes, but if I do attributes.class, what it will actually do is it will then only write out the class part of those attributes, and then by adding an attribute, oh, God, so sorry for these tags. This is my slide set that's kind of doing this wrong. Um, damn it. Let me just see here. If I have a better, good, we have a better one here. Um, so if I want to add in foo to my article and I don't want to destroy how Drupal does it, what I would do is I would just do article class foo, print out the attribute class and then print out the rest of the stuff that comes out. Ignore this thing, this is my slide deck that's just adding this in, I don't know why. Um, so the rest of the attributes would print it out. So what it would do was, was give in something like this, an article with a class that says foo or feel foo, and then because there's a role added into the attributes, it will also print that out. So if I always remember to print out your attributes at the end, you can split up the attributes, you can manipulate the data the way you want without breaking everything. So a developer coming in wanting to add something to an element, you have as a front end of the control of what goes on in the class and the role or whatever, those kind of things that you actually want to do stuff with. But if they want to add in a data object, data something, um, they can add that in without you breaking everything, which to me seems pretty fun. Um, so let me just see how much time do I have. Holy shit. Have I already talked that much? Okay, you're going to speed it up a little bit. So here's an example of, of um, if you get this from a designer, you know, he says, hey, uh, you know, the terms should look something like this. Uh, give me nth amount of tags and say, give me the different, um, Elements from the terms, add a comma between each, a dot at the last one. And by the way, I think that the second of these um, terms, they should have, they should be in italic and green. And you'll be like, what the fuck? Why would you have that in italic and green? Well, I don't know why, but the client have signed off on it, and that's how it's going to be. So can you just do that for me? Uh, in Drupal 7, I know the exact way how I would do that. I will take a fork and I will begin to poke it into my eye until I could not see anything more because that is the only way to actually get Drupal and terms to like do what you want. But look at this beauty. So this would be the markup I want to get out. So I would do like a section, a section tag with a, no, just a class name that says tags. So I know this is the tags. I would add a little span 
that says three tags, and then I would just like print out the tags, maybe with an odd and even on, and then a class name that says the designer is an idiot, uh, having a dot at the end and a comma. So this is my end result. This is how you can like minimize this to the very, very the smallest thing I could find. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a loop in my template file. My template file is field dash field field tags, so we can, you can find that out of the debug because this is just a field. And I will go, okay, let's start this loop, and then I'm going to go like for delta item in items. Honestly, I don't even know what that means, but I don't need to know. I just you know, copy and paste it in. So this loop starts up here and it ends down there because it's a four and in four done. Okay, so um, if I start by adding in, uh, if I want to have a class name that says like odd and even or account or something, let's do that as well. So I will start by see, do a set class, which is basically the same thing as oh, hey, let's define a variable, um, and then. Do it well, it'll cycle between even and odd and, and, and take this delta thing, which apparently you can identify on, and just go back and forth. So we, could, we will get odd and even, odd and even, or even and odd, whatever. You know. um, and then give me a class that says count dash and then the loop index so I have an idea how far down we are. So if we want to have a class name that is defined this way, we could do that. And that would and then just you know, print it out, take this class, which I defined up here print that in, and then take the whole item and print that out. That gives us this result. Fair enough. Um, that's the first part of it. Well, I had this thing with, with so if there's one tag, I, I, I want to have it to say there's one tag. If there's 300 tags, I want to have it to say 300 tags, you know, with an S on or without that S. Sweet. Or, in Drupal 7, the whole idea was like, oh no, we cannot give this power to the front end because they will break it up because, oh no, Jesus. I mean, how about we just get the data and get it done? So what I do here is like I add in the span tag on it. I go count on the loop length. If that's more than one, fair enough, print loop length and tag, else print it out. So it will give me this. Again, this is easy, readable, and nice to work with. Then I want to add in the class, the designer is an idiot. And I want to only have that class in. So what I'm doing now is I, I've run through all of the loops. And I say, if this is the first loop, OK, fair enough. You just do whatever you want. If you're the second loop, if you're into that index, well, add in the designer is an idiot. And then just add the rest of the classes in and end that loop. This will now put this one in the designer is an idiot. I get exactly the class names I want. And up until now, no developer had been heard in the process. Um, and if you take it one step, if this is like all of the code. So if I want to do, it's a simple loop. I, I test on it, figure out how many tags there is. I then print out the first version of it. I then go to the second version and say, okay, if, you, if you're number two in the row, well, add in the designer is an idiot. If you're the last of the row, well, add in a dot instead and then don't do any more. And if then if you are none of these, well, just print yourself out normally with the class name and the comma at the end, and that will give me this kind of data. Oh, that's actually a mistake here. Uh, God. Ah. Mm. Right. There we go. How would you do this in Drupal 7? Yeah, exactly. I was like one dude who's like, oh. he rolled his eyes like he was a teenage girl. He was like, nah. Because that was how it used to be. This is straight out of the box. It took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to do this, manipulate the data directly the way I wanted without hurting anything. To me, this is the sexiest shit I've seen since, since, since um, I was not mentioning any names. Um, another thing that, that we have now, which I think is it's really, really awesome. Jesus Christ, I'm behind on time. Is, is the trick block. So what a trick block does, it gives you the opportunity to take a part of your, if your page or your, a part of a template and exchange that on the fly. So let's say I have a front page. And on the front page, I want to exchange a region on it. So I can do a block and an end block, putting this command in inside of the template file, and then look at the theme hook suggestion and overwrite that. So the way to do that is, again, theme debug tells me, Oh, dude, if it's a front page, I have this uh, template file to work with. Well, in my page trick file, I'm going to define a header block and say, change me if I'm on the front page. Then 
I do a page dash dash front HTML trick file, that thing is extending what we have on our um, on the site. And normally this would overwrite the template, but because I ex explained to the system, yo, exchange this. If you exchange this part with themes, Excel templates, page HTML trick, if you're that file, will exchange this part and then go um, on the front page. That will give you this result. So if you're on a normal node, you would get this. And if you are on a front page, you would get that. How is that clever? Well, the thing is, if you're doing multiple different pages based on where well, you just have a slight little change if it's another content type, you would end up having you know, 12 different content types, right? 12, 12 different um, not content type, uh, having a template for each content type. That is a pain in the ass to work with. This will just take that little snippet that you don't have to work with anymore, exchange that, and be done with it. Um, another thing here is, is translate. So um, this is how it used to look like before we did this. This is how translate looks like now. Um, to me, this is a beauty beyond belief. You guys, just looking at this markup, my, the amount of times I'm going to fuck this up and, and you know, don't remember this little playing or this the whole T-tag, that thing. No, you know what? If you have a piece of text that you want to translate in your theme, you just do this and be done with it. That is a beauty. And that will actually mean you can make it speak Swedish at any time. Um, but the thing is, um, it's, we're not done yet. We need more people. And we, we not need more people to a lot of things. The, the most important thing we need right now is front-enders to come in and help us. And what is that we, we need help with? Well, the thing is, um, it's been a small group who's trying to take control of this, and we have a clear vision of what we want to do, and we will fight every developer who doesn't think the same way. What I figured out or learned the last year is that we have a whole ton of developers who love the idea of actually having front-enders to work with who understand that part of the world. Because, I mean, if you can just live your safe little life behind APIs and database calls and do that kind of thing, and let us take care of the 6,000 different kind of devices and stuff, I guess we can like, divide that stuff pretty even. Um, so one of the things we really want to have is like, more front-enders coming and help us out with what we want to have out the box. We have a tag on D.O. called Dream Markup, and Dream Markup is the idea of discussing markup or how stuff should look and feel directly out of the box without having to add it in as a patch. Because adding it as a patch is a pain. How many front-enders, by the way, have, do I have in the room who say, hey, I'm a badass front-ender. That's how I roll. How many of you have ever put in a patch into Drupal Core? How many felt that is a pain in the ass? Yes, exactly. So to actually be able just to discuss this stuff, just add it in to Dream Markup. It's a place, it's a tag that identifies um, template discussion um, so we can go that way instead. Um, this is the trick team right now. It's Kotsa, Joel, Jen Lambton, me, uh, Ruben, and Mark Carver, and Fabian X. What I really want to have you in, and why do I need you? Because, well, have you seen how little people it is that's trying to change the whole way that Drupal actually puts out the markup? I mean, that's not fair to put all that shit on, on our shoulders, right? I mean, I, for, for the last three to four years, I've, I've accused John Alpin for everything that was wrong with Drupal 7 theming. What John has now told me that he's going to accuse me of everything that's wrong with Drupal 8 theming, which, of course, is maybe is fair. I really want to have other people who is just as passionate, just as, as um, you, don't even, you don't have to know it all. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't. Uh, but we need more people who actually want to discuss and do this stuff right. And why do we want to have you in now instead of, so instead of waiting till Drupal 8 comes out and then six months, because that's what we have been doing for the last eight years. And the only thing that creates is a bunch of issues and people bitching and moaning and we're not getting anywhere. Um, we really need people to come in now and play with this stuff. Um, we're having a weekly meeting, uh, which is at 1 a.m. Thursday night, or Thursday morning, which is 12 o'clock here, uh, which is maybe not so good, but we're doing it on a worldwide scale. So we're sitting all, all over the world and trying to like, get this um, thing going. So that's why we're having this meeting at that time. At the same, same thing, we're also on Drupal Desk Twig, which is the um, IOC channel. Um, but actually, the thing is, tomorrow, when we're doing a code sprint, uh, what I would love to see was a, a couple of front-enders who, or back-enders or developers, or what we call ourselves, come in and play along with the things we can do now in the theme layer, and actually just sit down and play with it and touch it. 
Because by having people, more people like touching the stuff now, we are going to find the mistakes or figure out are we even taking the right decisions? Because the way decisions sometimes get made in the, in the front end world or the, in the Drupal world is not maybe always optimal. It's like who were in the, right, in the room at the right time and took that decision. So by you being in the room tomorrow can actually help us out figure out what's the right decisions. Um, whew. Did I just talk nonstop for 45 minutes? Okay. Sorry for that. So, normally I would have a slide here that says any questions. So, um, but let's just do that anyway. So, any questions? Uh, no, I have not, honestly. Um, we have been talking about doing some of that stuff. I think it's a thing that we want to do, in, maybe going to do in Drupal 9. Um, it's big and complicated, <laughs> to be honest, and it's just cleaning up Drupal right now is a, is a big enough pain to get that stuff working. So that's the, I mean, the thing that shocked me about doing Drupal 8 work for the last year and a half is I've been so focused into the template files that I had no idea what's going on with the rest of Drupal. I had no idea we can now edit our website from a mobile phone, which is like making me like, whoa. Um, so the question answer to that was no. I saw other hands somewhere. Uh, so that's a lot of wonderful questions. So one of the debug things we can do, if I, let me see if I find a place I can actually do stuff, is, oops. Can I actually write this? Oh, of course not. Um, so we can do a debug uh, command, which is basically right now just dropping off all of the, the variables. That is not very optimal because if you do that on a template file right now, it will drop down everything there is. So it's uh, a little bit of a pain. Um, what we're working on is a new debug tool called Dumpster. And Dumpster would be, um, it's in an alpha, alpha, alpha version. So the idea is to give give the theme a quicker access to actually figure out the data that he needs and at the same time making sure that we, we don't leave the developers behind because that will be retarded. Uh, right now the tool is not good. To be honest, it, um, I've crashed my machine a couple of times by doing this, which is always fun. But hey, we're in the alpha state right now. Um, so it will be there. Um, and if anybody want to help out with making Dumpster epic, um, the idea is this actually. So right now, as, as same thing as we have contextual links. You know, you want to edit your note. How sweet would it be if we could do the same thing, but I said, I want to edit my template, and we can just grab that template out, because we have the data in there already. That's the idea. We have, there's an alpha alpha working somewhere, um, but we really want to have help with that. That's Fubu, by the way, who's working on that, and he's the one who does Omega 4. So um, that's, that's the one we're going to pick on that. More questions? I know it's, yes. Um, so the question is how, how template, uh, the pre-process and process has changed. So here's a funny thing. Um, I don't care. <laughs> no, and I know this is kind of a, a, like a, a smarky remark, but one of the things that I figured out over the last year to year and a half is I wanted to figure out how I actually could do a lot of this stuff without having to have that other file, that template PHP file that ends up with having 3,000 lines in it and you cannot find shit, um, which to me is a maintainability uh, thing that, that drives me personally nuts. Let me just see if I can find the, I have it here somewhere. Um, no, so the whole idea of having, oh, come here, mm -mm, boom. Having a thing like this, having the set command directly is um, if we want to do any kind of front end uh, changes or like logic and you want to add in a class or do something like that, a lot of this thing can be done directly. Um, so I can find an answer for you a little bit later, but honestly, I've not looked into it. We're still having the pre process or the process, it's still there. But what I figured out, uh, it was the same thing, well, hey, I want to change in how views put out all this, its data. I kind of just took it and did it. And it was kind of like, what the, I mean, don't I have to like find this stuff and just get it done with? It's a pretty amazing experience the first time you get in and begin to play around with this because like, why wasn't this this way always? So, any more? 
or do you just want to get out here and get a drink? Okay then, well, I have, uh, I have a little stickers here. For you guys, um, a thing, and I'm very, very serious about this, if you're a front ender, come and talk with me. We need every man on deck. Uh, we have a ton of work that needs to get done. If you're a developer who is tired of hearing of your, your front enders bitching and moaning, this is the only way you can make them stop bitching and moaning. So, uh, with that, thank you for looking through my little bit rocket session. Um, it's been a pleasure. Tomorrow we're going to sprint like madmen on this stuff. We're pretty much going to do that all the way to Austin and pretty much also to DrupalCon in Amsterdam until we're done. And then we're going to figure out how to make it really easy. Um, I'm going to post out from my Twitter account because um, boom, from this account, which is my Twitter account, I'm going to post out the slides for this. Um, and if you have any comments or anything that's unclear, anything you want to participate with or good ideas or anything, well, pretty please step up to the plate because it's right now that we're doing all this stuff. And whenever Drupal 8 is out, it's too late to change things. Um, so it's now we can change it. And the thing is, hey, I don't even understand how this stuff works. Well, believe me, we actually want to tell you. This is the thing that, that I mean, it's been eight years for me busting ass to get Drupal to understand that we need to change the markup. And to be honest, when we got triggered into Drupal Core, I am a strong man. I am Viking heritage. I don't cry over code commits. I lie sometimes. So thank you for that, and um, see you in the issue queue.